U.S. District Judge Lynn uh, Edelman struck down the contentious and controversial 2011 voting law in Wisconsin. Now, this was signed back in 2011 by Governor Scott Walker. It instituted new requirements for voter ID, and at the time, it was perhaps the most draconian uh, voter fraud legislation that we had. Now, places like North Carolina, a couple of other states have passed things that are even worse, but this one has been struck down. Now, understand that for a little while now, it has been suspended, but finally struck down. And the quotes from the district judge, I think are, are great for those of us who want freer and fairer and more inclusive uh, uh, democratic elections in the US. And when you see her reasoning for why she did this, I think you'll be as optimistic as I am. So here are some of her quotes. She says, the evidence at trial established that virtually no voter impersonation occurs in Wisconsin. The defendants could not point to a single instance of known voter impersonation occurring in Wisconsin at any time in the recent past. She goes on to say, if voter impersonation is occurring often enough to threaten the integrity of the electoral process, then we should be able to find more evidence that it is occurring than we do. If, for example, voter impersonation is a frequent occurrence, then we should find more than two unexplained cases per major election in which a voter arrives at the polls only to discover that someone has already cast a ballot in his or her name. And so there she's uh, knocking down some of the principal arguments that, that mainly Republican conservatives have used to defend this voter ID law. And so it's great to see that she's not buying it. Yeah, I think that this is a great ruling and she's basically echoing what a lot of critics have said about these voter ID laws from the very beginning, that there aren't instances of voter fraud, that it's a non-issue. And the real reason why uh, the Republican Party primarily wanted to push for these laws was to prevent people who typically vote for the Democratic uh, candidate from voting. So just to give you an example of that, um, the main issue here, of course, is the ID issue, right? So some people might say, well, it's not that unreasonable to ask for an ID during the elections. But the timing was very convenient for the Republican Party because it was right before the 2012 election. And also another thing to keep in mind is about 300,000 people living in that state do not have an ID, no form of identification. And the majority of those individuals are actually low income. So it's a little bit of an undue burden for them to get the ID, and I'll tell you why. If you look at the institutions that you go to to get get an ID, it's obviously the DMV. The DMV closes at 5 p.m., right? They have 92 DMVs in the state. Only one of them is open over the weekend. So let's say you are poor, you are working for an hourly wage, you had to take time off work, maybe use your vacation hours, maybe give up a day of work and not get paid that day, just to go to the DMV, spend the day there to get that ID. I mean, that's an undue burden in that case. Yeah. Um, so it is a problem, and when you really think about the way the law actually ended up, you have no instances of voter ID fraud, right? I'm sorry, no voter fraud. And at the same time, you are destroying or you are violating other people's ability to vote. These are eligible voters that now don't have the ability and to so vote. And when, so when, when they, usually when you go out to vote, you're looking for a representation, someone to represent your beliefs and who you come from and really help you out in this country. So in that scenario, when you have to go to the DMV, which is never open when you need to, and when you do, you have to take time off work and do all these things, you kind of lose touch with what is really going to work for you. So it also lowers your desire to really want to go out and vote and do something and get involved because you don't believe it's ever going to happen because it's never happened before. Again, it's focusing on a certain group of people that are disenfranchised and let them continue to be disenfranchised. That's the one point I want you that triggered that thought for me. Mm -hmm. So they want to keep them out because they already feel that way. Number two, it's already been mentioned multiple times that the larger numbers, which is probably five, of voter fraud that has happened <laughs> happens with Republicans mm -hmm. because they're, too, they're so wrapped up in this, this idea that, oh my God, these Democratic uh, people are out and they're destroying our voting values, they're voter frauds, they're coming in and they're destroying our system, this, our, dem our democracy is falling apart. Both instances of voting fraud from 2012. Roxanne Rubin, who's a 56-year-old woman in uh, Nevada, she accepts a plea deal after committing voter fraud. She was arrested on November 3rd after trying to vote twice. Uh, first, she voted at her, at her normal voting site in Henderson, Nevada, and then she went to a second site and then when those poll workers said, wait, we have record that you already voted, she adamantly said she didn't, and then voted again, got arrested. And this is the reason. This has always been an issue for me. I just feel the system is flawed. 
Well, seems like it's working pretty damn well because they got your ass. <laughs> yeah. Your brain um, flawed. Yeah, so the thing is, it, she keeps internalizing this idea that voter fraud is happening. Let me go test the system because I, I, I bet you they're going to let me vote twice just like these asshole Democrats. Not, apparently not. Same voting cycle. This is an unnamed Mexican man, a new Mexican man, sorry. He lived in New Mexico. And he voted, then obtained a second provisional ballot and announced he was just testing the system to see if people could get away with voting twice. No, you couldn't. You got arrested instead. Yeah. Now, the last thing about our first lady, I was, I love this part of it. Her plea deal, because she had to admit that she did it wrong, $2,400 and, and, and uh, $82,481 that she had to pay in restitution, 100 hours of community service, and stay out of trouble <laughs> and complete an impulse control course. So I, I, yeah. I like the embarrassing uh, sentence that she had to, this, yeah. first of all, $2,400 seems pretty devastating yeah. for yeah, such a hard. stupid stunt. So, with, and, and after all these things happen, then you just, you, it's never gonna end. No one's gonna come out and say, remember Roxanne Rubin, that dumbass? You gonna do that too? Yeah. It, it, I, I just wish at some point we'd absorb what we've already seen. Yeah, and, and look, it, it's great that they, that they caught those two people, but honestly, if they hadn't, I'm pretty sure the candidate that they were supporting yeah. didn't win or lose by one vote. It probably would have been okay. Totally. Like, we, we, have, we have great cause over the past 10 years to question the integrity of our voting systems, but it's not from regular Americans trying to game the system. It's from the people who manufacture the electronic voting machines. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think it's a problem if one person in New Mexico tries to go and vote twice. I do think if it's a problem, if scientists and, and academics have shown how easy it is to hack these uh, machines wirelessly, and you see them being sold on eBay where they can then be reverse engineered. Exactly. Like that is exactly what we should be protecting against. And I want to talk in particular, not to the, the libs and the dems who are watching this, because I think they understand the, 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 I guess, rationale behind why the Republicans are trying to do this, but to the conservatives who want the system to be safe and feel like it could be sort of gamed by ACORN or something like that, even though <laughs> ACORN was doing fake registrations that did not then have any chance of translating into fake votes. Like, why is it then that in North Carolina they allow you to use your gun license as identification but not a college ID as identification? Right. And like, understand that when they do that and they disenfranchise those, uh, those college voters, they're not just disenfranchising dirty hippies, they're disenfranchising college Republicans as well. And they're telling those young conservatives, look, we don't care enough about your vote to chance it being outnumbered by college Democrats. Like you understand, you got to understand why they're doing this, and I know that that for a conservative, like they tend to be, I would say, more anxious and more fearful about the world. They fear violence enough to carry guns around, and so I understand that they're going to approach the the voting system and be worried about these things. But it is simply a lie to say that it's unsecure or that yeah. its insecurity can be exploited by regular people. Just really quick, I mean, you mentioned the whole fear and paranoia thing. I mean, there have been. A, a few studies at this point that talk about the fear centers mm -hmm. of people's brains and those who have a larger amygdala tend to be conservative <laughs> and the amygdala, amygdala is of course the part of the brain that uh, is the fear center the the part where paranoia is and probably, they can't let go yeah. of it no matter yeah. how many times it's been shot down as again by this judge and isn't it sad that this judge as you read her uh, her her judgment on it, or at least her um, I guess there's a decision on it mm -hmm. I was thinking at least Wow, that's great. It seems so brave that she's saying this basic, honest truth. Yeah. Why is the general honest truth so refreshing to hear? Because you don't hear it that often in politics. Sucks. Yeah, and, and it's great that she said what she said because this now then can become uh, precedent for future uh, d decisions. And looking ahead to those, like we said, this is being struck down in Wisconsin, but there are still even worse ones in places like North Carolina. And so uh, in advance of those potentially being challenged, the ACLU Voting Rights uh, Project Director says, uh, this is a warning to other states that are trying to make it harder for citizens to vote. This decision put them on notice that they can't tamper with citizens' fundamental right to cast a ballot. The people and our democracy deserve and demand better. A professor at UC Irvine also saying about the best possible opinion that, uh, uh, speaking about this decision, saying it's the best possible opinion that opponents of voter identification laws could have hoped for. In sum, this is a huge victory for voter ID opponents, but time will tell if this ruling survives. Mm -hmm. And with the Supreme Court that we have, perhaps it won't. I was going to say, sadly, I, I, I like his, op well, he doesn't really have optimism. I don't believe it's going to, at least, it needs to spread further. I mean, I don't trust other states' uh, judges are going to really go on the side of it, because really they're kind of still doing the bidding of the people who are doing the bidding of the people who are giving the money, yeah. and they don't really want more people voting in the first place. A yeah. simple solution would be represent the people that voted you in.